Hi, welcome to this Court Miles video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the test solutions practice questions. If you need any extra help on test solutions, if you go to corporatemiles.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 36, there's a video tutorial there on test solutions. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus to the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at question number one. So question number one says a regular hexagon is drawn below. So we've got this isometric grid and a regular hexagon. And on the grid above, show how the hexagon tessellates. You should draw at least eight shapes. So we've got to draw eight more hexagons and show how this regular hexagon will tessellate. So let's do that. So as you can see, I've now drawn nine more regular hexagons. I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the question said to draw at least eight shapes. So I've drawn nine here just to show how this hexagon tessellates. So they fit together perfectly with no gaps. Okay, so that's how I would approach question number one. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says a quadrilateral is drawn below. So as you can see, there's a quadrilateral on this grid. And part A says, what is the name of the quadrilateral? So this quadrilateral is a trapezium. It's got one pair of parallel lines. As you can see, the top is parallel to the bottom. And we've got no other pairs of parallel lines. So this is a trapezium. So let's write that down, trapezium. Okay, and then part B. Part B says, on the grid above, show how the quadrilateral tessellates. You should draw at least eight shapes. So we've got to draw eight more trapezia, trapeziums, <laughs> to show how this trapezium will tessellate. So let's do that. And there you go. So I've just drawn nine more trapezia on the grid. So in total, we've got 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that includes the one that was drawn for us. So we've got 10 trapezia on the grid. And as you can see, they fit together perfectly with no gaps. And I could just carry on that pattern if I wanted to. So that's it. So I've shown how the quadrilateral, how the trapezium tessellates. OK, let's have a look at question number three. OK, let's have a look at question number three. So question number three says a quadrilateral is drawn below. So as you can see, we've got a grid and we've got a kite on that grid. So that's the quadrilateral we've got here, a kite. And if we scroll down, part A says, what is the name of the quadrilateral? So it's a kite. So let's write that down. It's a kite. And part B, part B says, on the grid above, show how the quadrilateral tessellates. So we need to show how that kite tessellates. You should draw at least eight shapes. So let's draw at least eight more kites on the grid to show how this kite will tessellate. So let's do that. So there we go. So as you can see, the kites tessellate. They fit together with no gaps. And we could carry on that pattern if we wanted to. It's quite, it's quite a nice pattern. And as you can see, I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more kites on the grid as we were asked to. And as you can see, we've got the four, which are the right way around. One, two, three, four. And then we've got four that are upside down. One, two, three, four. And we could just carry that on if we wanted to. So that's part A. It's a kite. And part B, we've drawn at least eight more to show how the kite tessellates. And that's it. OK, let's look at our next question, question number four. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says a pentagon is drawn on the grid below. So we've got this grid and we've got this irregular pentagon. It's irregular because the angles are obviously not all the same and the sides are different lengths. So this is not a regular pentagon and regular pentagons don't tessellate anyway. But here we've got an irregular pentagon and we've been asked to show how this pentagon tessellates. The question actually says show how the pentagon will tessellate. You should draw at least six more pentagons. So let's draw six more pentagons on the grid and show how they will tessellate. And there we go. So as you can see, these pentagons do tessellate and we could just carry on that pattern. We could just carry on the pentagons going across sideways, then put a row of upside down pentagons above them and then a row of the pentagons again on top of them like so and just carry on. And as you can see, I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, like we we're asked to. And I could have drawn more because the question says to draw at least six pentagons. I've just drawn six, but I could have drawn another one and so on. So those pentagons will tessellate. They fit together with no gaps between them. OK, let's look at question number five. So question number five says, here's a tessellating pattern made from equilateral triangles. So as you can see, we've got these equilateral triangles. And remember, an equilateral triangle is a triangle where all the sides are the same length. So for instance, if it was four centimeters here, that'll be four centimeters and that'll be four centimeters. And each of the angles are equal. So that would be 60 degrees, 60 degrees and 60 degrees because 180 divided by three is 60. So in an equilateral triangle, the angles are always 60 degrees. So we've got these equilateral triangles where all the sides are the same length and the angles are all 60 degrees. And if we scroll down, we've been asked to write down the size of each interior angle in the equilateral triangle. So we've talked about that already. So here we've got an equilateral triangle here, and we want to write down the size of each interior angle, the size of this angle. Now, as I've said, the angles in a triangle will add up to be 180 degrees, and there's three equal angles. So if we do 180 divided by 3, that's equal to 60 degrees, because 60 plus 60 is 120, plus 60 is 180. So that is a 60 degree angle. So that is 60 degrees. 
and part B. Part B says explain why equilateral triangles tessellate. So let's have a look and see where they meet. So let's consider, for instance, this point here. So here we've got a point where we've got six equilateral triangles that fit together perfectly. We've got this triangle, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see we've got these six equilateral triangles and they all fit together perfectly at this point. And the reason is each one of these angles is 60 degrees. We've got one 60 degree angle, another 60 degree angle, another 60 degree angle, another 60 degree angle, another 60 degree angle, and another 60 degree angle. And six 60s is 360. So they fit together perfectly with no gaps. So that's why equilateral triangles tessellate because six equilateral triangles can join together at a point and they will make the 360 degrees, which we you know the angles at a point add up the 360 degrees, so there's no gap. So let's write that down. And there we go. So I've just said, as each angle is 60 degrees, six angles will fit together to make 360 degrees. So the angles at that point will add together to be 360 degrees. And that's why those equilateral triangles will tessellate. Because as you can see, you will keep on getting those points where six of them will meet together and there will be no gaps. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question. OK, question number six. Question number six says, here's a tessellating pattern made from equilateral triangles and squares. So as you can see here, we've got a square and another 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 square and so on. And we've got these equilateral triangles here, 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 here and so on. So we've got these squares and equilateral triangles. And just remember, with a square, each angle is 90 degrees. That's a right angle. So each angle is 90 degrees. And for the equilateral triangle, as we've seen, each angle in the equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. And they're the angles inside of those shapes. So question Question A says write down the size of each interior angle in the equilateral triangle. So as we've looked at in question 5, that is equal to 60 degrees because 180 divided by 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So each angle inside the interior angles of that equilateral triangle are 60 degrees each. Part B. Part B says write down the size of each interior angle in the square. So obviously with a square to right angle, so that's 90 degrees. OK, and part C says explain why equilateral triangles and squares can form a pattern that tessellates. So let's go up and see why these squares and these equilateral triangles can tessellate, why they fit together with no gaps. So if we consider a point, let's look at this one here. We've got this right angle, so that's 90 degrees. We've got this 60 degree angle. We've got this 60 degree angle. We've got this right angle and we've got this 60 degree angle. So we've got these angles that fit together at a point. So we've got 60, 60, 90, 60 and 90. So let's add those up and see what we get. So if we had 60 plus 60 plus 60, that's equal to 180. We've got our 90 plus 90, 90 plus 90 is equal to 180. And if we add those up, we will get 180 plus 180 is equal to 360. So if we add together 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 90 plus 90, the answer would be 360 degrees. So they fit together perfectly with no gap. Now let's have a look at the other points. So this at this point, we had three triangles and two squares joining at this point here. Let's have a look at another point. Let's look at this point here. So we've got a square, a square, a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle. So again, that's two squares and three equilateral triangles. So again, they will add together to be 360 degrees. Let's choose another point. Let's choose this one here. And again, we've got a right angle, a right angle. So a square and a square, that's 90 and 90. 60, 60, and 60. So we have three triangles and two squares. So every time these shapes meet, you've got two squares and three equilateral triangles. And that'll be two lots of 90 and three lots of 60. And they will always add together to be 360 degrees. So let's explain that. And that's it. So I've just written, at each point, three equilateral triangles and two squares will fit together perfectly since 3 times 60 plus 2 times 90 is equal to 360 degrees. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question. So question number seven. So question number seven says, show in as a regular pentagon. So here we've got a regular pentagon. And we talked about that in one of the previous questions, a regular pentagon. So here we've got a regular pentagon. And part A says, what is the size of each interior angle? So here we've got a pentagon. So the angles in a pentagon will add together to be 540 degrees. And the reason is, in a triangle, it's 180. In a quadrilateral, it's 360. And in a pentagon, it's 540. Each time we add an extra side, we add another 180 degrees to the sum of the angles. So the angles inside of the regular pentagon will add together. These five angles will add together to be 540 degrees. Now, it's a regular pentagon. That means each of these angles are equal. They're all the same size. So if we divide by 5, we will find the size of each interior angle. So let's do 540 divided by 5. 
So how many fives go into five? That's one. How many fives go into four? That's zero, remainder four. And now how many fives go into 40? That's eight. So that means that each angle is 108 degrees. So it means that this angle is 108 degrees. Okay, and the question then carries on. It says, GM says a tessellating pattern can be formed from only using regular pentagons. Is he correct? Explain your answer. Now, we've talked about this earlier. Regular pentagons do not tessellate. And the reason is that if we put three of them together, it doesn't quite make a full circle. There's a gap because if we do three times 108, it's less than 360. So that means there's a gap, but we can't actually fit the fourth pentagon in. So that means that the, it won't test it because we have three pentagons, there's a gap, and four pentagons, but they would overlap. So they won't fit together perfectly. So if we take our 108 degrees and we multiply it by three, let's see what we get. Three times eight is 24. So let's put our four down, carry our two. Three times zero is zero, plus two is two, and three times one, is three. So that means that if we put three regular pentagons together, the angles will add up to be 324 degrees. Now that's less than 360, but a fourth one won't fit in. So that means that they won't tessellate. So let's explain that. And that's it. So I've written, as each interior angle is 108 degrees, three pentagons at a point will be 324 degrees and not leaving sufficient space for a fourth pentagon. So that fourth pentagon won't fit in. So that means that regular pentagons will not tessellate. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number eight. So question number eight says, shown as a regular hexagon. So we've got this regular hexagon, and part A says, what is the size of each interior angle? So it's a hexagon, so that means the angles will add together to be 720 degrees. Because we know a pentagon, the angles add up to 540 degrees, and if we add another 180, that'll be 720 degrees. Or another way to do it, if you remember the formula is, n take away two times 180. So it's got six sides. If we take away two, that's four times 180 is 720 degrees. If I'm to be honest, I always recommend to my students they know that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, a quadrilateral 360 degrees. I, I say to them they should really remember that a pentagon, the angles add up to 540, and with a hexagon they add up to 720. And they're the ones that I tend to, to learn off by heart, and then I would use the rules to then work out the rest of the polygons. So part A says, what is the size of each interior angle? So we want to find the size of one of these angles. Now, because these angles add up together to be 720 degrees, and it's regular, that means that each of the angles are equal to each other. If we take the 720 degrees and divide it by six, we will find the size of one angle. So how many sixes go into seven? That'll be one, remainder one. How many sixes go into 12? That's two. And how many sixes go into zero? That's zero. So that means that each interior angle is 120 degrees. So each interior angle is 120 degrees. Okay, and then the question carries on, and the question says, Emma says a tessellating pattern can be formed from only using regular hexagons. Is she correct? Explain your answer. So regular hexagons do tessellate, and the reason they tessellate is that three of them can fit together perfectly without leaving any space. If we do 120 degrees times three, that's equal to 360 degrees. And that means that three regular hexagons will fit together perfectly without a gap. So that means that those regular hexagons can tessellate. And there's lots of examples of regular hexagons that tessellate. So sometimes if you look at a path, it can be rectangles or squares that fit together with no gaps. But you can make paths by using hexagonal paving slabs. And those hexagons will fit together perfectly to make a path. Um, if you consider the Giant's Causeway. So on the North County Antrim coast, up on the north coast of Northern Ireland, there's the Giant's Causeway and you've got these hexagonal diagonal columns that fit together perfectly without any space and it's really cool because you can sort of jump from one to one and they're really good to walk across and um, even I've seen roofs where you've got these hexagonal patterns on the roof uh, I think there's a market in Barcelona where they've got hexagonal tiles on the roof and they fit together perfectly without any spaces so three regular hexagons will fit together perfectly without any space and it would look something like this so as you can see, three regular hexagons will fit together without any space, so they will tessellate. Just thinking, does that look a bit like a beehive with these regular hexagons? Uh, something I'm going to look up whenever I finish this video. But as you can see, three times 120 degrees is 360, so it will fit together without leaving any space. And let's write that down. And that's it. So just written, yes, three regular hexagons can fit together at a point. Three times 120 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number nine. So question number nine says, circle the shape that tessellates. And we've got four choices, a regular heptagon, a regular hexagon, a regular octagon, or a regular decagon. And as we've just seen from question number eight, regular hexagons tessellate because three of them will fit together perfectly. Each interior angle is 120 degrees and they'll fit together perfectly to make 360 degrees and not leave any space. So I'm going to circle a regular hexagon because regular hexagons tessellate. 
And that's our one mark question, so we just need to circle a regular hexagon, and it's a one mark question, so that's it, done. But because in this video I've just circled it and said it's a regular hexagon, and we know that each angle is 120 degrees, so three of them fit together perfectly without leaving any space, so that's why they tessellate. Just out of interest, I'm going to show you why regular heptagon, octagon, and decagon will not tessellate. And I'm going to use this rule that n subtract 2 times 180 degrees will give us the sum of the interior angles. So if we take the number of sides and take away 2 and times about 180 degrees, it will tell us what the angles add up together to be in these shapes. So if we start off with the decagon, we're going to take 10, because it's got 10 sides, we're going to do 10, take away 2, and times 180 degrees. And 10 take away 2 is 8, so if we do 8 times 180 degrees, that's what the angles inside a decagon will add up together to be. So 8 times 180 is equal to 1440 degrees. And because it's a decagon, and all of the angles are the same, if we take our 1440 and divide it by 10, that'll be the size of each angle, which is 144 degrees. So we found the size of each interior angle in the regular decagon. Now for a regular decagon to tessellate, that means that 360 would have to be divisible by 144. So for instance, we know that 360 is divisible by 120, so three regular hexagons will tessellate. We know that 360 is divisible by 90 for a square, and that's why four squares will tessellate. Even for an equilateral triangle, we know that 360 is divisible by 60. Six equilateral triangles will fit perfectly together. But 144 is not a factor of 360, so therefore that will not tessellate. A regular octagon, so we would do 8 subtract 2 times 180. 8 take away 2 is 6, so that's going to be 6 times 180. And 6 times 180 is equal to 1080. And because it's an octagon, that means it's eight equal angles. If we do 1,080 degrees and divide that by eight, that'll be the size of each interior angle of the regular octagon. And that's equal to 135 degrees. Now again, 360 is not divisible by 135. So 135 is not a factor of 360. So that means that regular octagons will not tessellate. And similarly, for regular heptagons, we would do seven take away two times 180, so that's going to be equal to 5 times 180, and 5 times 180 is equal to 900, and if we do 900 divided by 7, that's equal to 128.571 and so on degrees. So that's the size of each interior angle in a regular heptagon, and 360 is not divisible by that, that's not a factor of 360, so that means that a regular heptagon will not tessellate either. So that means that a regular heptagon is the only shape here that will tessellate, and it's one more question, so we don't actually have to show all that working out, just knowing the fact that a regular hexagon tessellates enough to just circle it, and then just move on to the next question, and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to tessellations practice questions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you need any extra help on tessellations, if you go to video 36 on Corporate Maths, there's a video tutorial there on tessellations. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. The focus of this video has been to go through the video solutions to the tessellation practice questions. I really hope it's helped. And if you have liked the video or you have found it useful, could you please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel? Thank you. Cheers. Bye.